of comfort, a realm of rest, and we thank God for that. Amen. We're going to have prayer on this morning. We want you to remember, amen, uh, those that are sick and shut in, amen, in your prayers, in the name of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you praise and thanks and honor, Lord, for all that you have done. We thank you, Lord God, for your goodness and your mercy, for how you have blessed us and you have brought us through, Lord God, difficult times in all of our lives that you have seen us through. Lord God, you've never been faithful, and we give you praise for that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask, O oh God, that you will bless, touch, and strengthen, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, your people, on this day, those that are sick and shut in, Lord God, those that are ill, and then we ask that you would remember them in Jesus' name. Let your healing virtues flow. Uh, Lord, let your love and your compassion, your comfort, Lord God, move on their behalf in the name of Jesus as we trust you. For your word declares you sent his word and heal them and deliver them from all their troubles. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Now bless your word today. Lord, as it comes forth by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord God, unctionize the thoughts, Lord, the mind, the words, the mouth of this, your vessel. We shall be so careful to give your name all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Man, praise the name of the Lord. Again, we certainly thank you for tuning in today. Amen. And we're going to get right to the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. And we can get through. Praise the name of God and just let the Lord have his way in your life. Listen, right where you sit, right where you stand, or right wherever you might be, we want you to know that God can meet you right where you are. Amen. You don't have to be uh, specifically in the church building. Amen. But if you're listening uh, to this 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 uh, telecast, amen, we know that God can meet you right where you are. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And since God's Spirit is everywhere at the same time, we know that He is there with you even right now. You may be suffering from depression, you may be going through periods of loneliness, but we want you to know that God is with you. Amen. God is concerned about you. He's simply waiting for you to call Him by His name. And when you call the Lord... By his name, he will answer. Praise the name of our God. Amen. We're going to talk this Palm Sunday, amen, uh, uh, about uh, uh, Jesus. Glory to God. And well, we talk every Sunday about Jesus, but we're talking about this morning, amen, the resurrection and the life. This is not Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday that's coming next week, but this is the prelude. Amen. There are things that led up to Jesus showing and proving that he was the resurrection and the life, amen. And before he got to that point, amen, he had an encounter. He had an encounter with some people that he loved. He had an encounter with some people that believed in him. He had an encounter, amen, with a young lady named Martha and her sister, amen, Mary. And then he had a supernatural encounter with their brother Lazarus. So we're going to talk about, amen, that situation a little bit today. And we believe that what God has for us is going to be a help and a blessing to the people of God on this morning. Amen. So we want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of John chapter number four. John chapter four. Amen. St. John, the gospel of St. John chapter number, I'm sorry, chapter 11, chapter 11, excuse me, chapter 11, verse four. Amen. Verse 4, that's going to be our focus scripture. Amen. But the entire uh, body, the entire, amen, meat of this particular story is found in chapters 11 and chapter 12. Amen. As Jesus is, is uh, on a mission and performing a work shortly before Palm Sunday. Amen. Shortly before Palm Sunday, uh, Jesus was making a declaration and showing to the country round about, amen, the power of God, amen, that, 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 that it was moving in the hearts and the minds of those that would simply believe. So for our subject this morning, we want to, to leave into your hearing, amen, wake up and believe, amen, wake up and believe, glory to God. John chapter 11 and verse number four, it says, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, 
but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Amen. There was this, this, this particular scripture, amen, is in direct response to the news getting to Jesus there in verse 1 through 3, that Lazarus, amen, a young man whom they loved and he loved, was sick. And Lazarus was so sick, amen, that uh, he had passed away. Amen. Jesus, if you remember in the story, amen, he uh, waited a couple of extra days before he left to go to Bethany. Amen. Before he left to go to where Lazarus was. Amen. Uh, uh, he whom thou lovest, amen, they told him, is sick. Amen. And so <clears throat> the sickness was so terrible and so bad. That, as we said, in, 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 in the natural sense of things, amen, Lazarus had passed away, amen. But Jesus was letting the, 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 the disciples know, amen, uh, uh, that, that, that the sickness was not unto death, but that the glory of God was going to be revealed in the Son of God. Amen. That the glory of God might show and prove that Jesus was the son of the living God. Amen. Jesus was God's word made flesh. Jesus was the living God in the form of flesh being manifested unto the world. Amen. And so we have to understand that when Jesus makes a statement, amen, he makes a statement based upon where he is, not based upon where we are. If you notice from that passage of scripture, if you remember the story, we're not going to go down through every verse in the interest of time, amen, but we will skip down through the story as the points of edification come up, amen, that, that, that we're going to present to you today by the help of the Lord, amen. Jesus, amen, though he had uh, excuses from people and, and, and reasons from men why uh, he should explain things to them, he did not care really what men thought about what he said initially because initially Jesus was speaking into the atmosphere, the plans of God. Remember now, Jesus was the word of God made flesh and so everything he said had to come to pass because he was the word of God and as he spoke it was simply God's words coming into manifestation into the understanding This sickness is not under death. Amen. We get we news get of news issues, of issues uh, in life. In life uh, uh, we get bad news and things that seem to have no resolution if God does not move right now. Amen. How many times have we all said, Lord, come right now? Lord, do it right now. We want immediate responses to our prayers from God. But God was trying to, uh, God was working. He wasn't trying. He was getting his disciples uh, and the people of God to learn how to wait on God. You see, God has a time and God has a season in which he's going to do what he's going to do. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14 through 17, amen, uh, this is from the Geneva Bible, which is just a little bit older than the King James Version, but I like what it was saying a little bit further down there in verse 16, but it says in verse 14, wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepeth, and stand up from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Take heed, therefore, that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. In the King James ver Version, this particular verse reads, redeeming the time, for the days are evil. But I like the way the Geneva Bible says it, redeeming the season, for the days are evil. In verse 17, wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Glory to the name of God. God has a perfect will that is going to be manifested. God has a perfect will, amen, that is going, praise the name of the Lord, to be shown. God has a perfect will, amen, that will come to pass in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His will is important. 
Amen. If it was not for the will of God, we would not be here. If it was not for the will of God, we would not know, amen, what God would have us to do. If it was not for the will of God, amen, we would be confused in every situation in our lives. We would have no hope. Glory to the name of God, not understanding and not knowing, amen, what God wants and what God desires of us. Praise the name of our Lord. Listen, we must overcome fear of opposition. Amen. Fear gets us off the track that God wants us to be on. Amen. We're talking about waking up and believing. The disciples at this particular time, amen, they were talking about Jesus' trip to Jerusalem and how that his trip to Jerusalem was going to be a dangerous trek. Amen. And they said, they, you, you can't go up into Jerusalem, Jesus, because they're looking to kill you. I'm so happy and I am so glad that it's not the will of man that determines whether I'm going to live or die. Jesus was not concerned because, again, he was the word of God made flesh. Amen. And that word of God was going to dwell. That word of God had a purpose. Amen. With which it had to accomplish. The word of God had a plan. Amen. That it had to accomplish. The word of God had a purpose that had to be done while it was in the earth. Praise the name of our God. Amen. Jesus was not afraid to go to Jerusalem, but the apostles were. And they were trying to figure out what was going on. Amen. What was going to happen when he got there to the point where they said, well, since he's going to go, we're going to go, Thomas said, and we're going to go and die with him. Amen. Overcoming fear of opposition causes us, amen, to be able to move in the will of God as God determines us to move. Amen. John, the, 20, the 11th uh, chapter, the 25th and the 26th verse said, Jesus said unto her, this is, this is Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Amen. In the midst of a move of God, fear will always rear its head in efforts to hinder faith from growing. Fear is always going to come up. Amen. Fear is going to try to get you, amen, to stop doing what God desires for you to do. Amen. God has not given us a spirit of fear, Paul told Timothy, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. When you have power, you can move uh, in spite of what you see going on around you. Amen. When you have love, uh, you're always going to move with compassion and the purposes of God and his people in mind. Amen. When you have a sound mind, it doesn't matter what you hear with your natural ears. Uh, you know what God has said to you in your spirit. You know what God has told you, amen, in the depths of your heart, and you are not going to waver. Amen. We don't have the spirit of fear. Amen. Fear comes when fear comes. Uh, fear brings torment. But the word declares that perfect love casts out all fear. Amen. The reason people get afraid is because their perception is not what it should be. You see, uh, perception is everything. Anybody ever talk to someone and, and you have to keep repeating yourself and keep explaining yourself because they're saying you said this and you're saying, no, that's not what I said. They say, well, this is what it sounds like to me. Well, that's your perception. The dialogue goes back and forth. And the person is trying to get a clear understanding and you're trying to give a clear understanding, but you have to stop them, amen, from dwelling on their perception and help them to see what you're trying to say or do or convey unto them. So perception is everything. If I perceive you to be a thief and you've never stole anything from me, that's my perception. And you have to change that perception or I have to change that perception one way or the other. So perception is everything. In verse 11, he said, these things said he, 
And after that, he saith unto them, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. Amen. When he said, we're going to go and awaken him, they were confused. Amen. They were like, wait a minute. If, we, if we're going to just go waken him, then he must not really be that sick. Praise the name of God. Jesus was getting ready to leave, and, and they came and told him, Lazarus is dead. Amen. And if Lazarus was dead, the disciples was like, you know, why, why, why are you going to wake him up? If he's dead, then he's not dead. He's just sleeping. Amen. They said in verse 12, amen, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be it Jesus spake of his death. But they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. And then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. He had to meet them. In their on their level he had to go to where their level of perception was and then take them by the hand and lead them into a greater understanding he had to lead them amen by saying to them this in verse 15 and I'm glad for your sake that I was not there to the intent ye may believe nevertheless let us go unto the unto him Jesus was telling them, I'm glad I wasn't there, and I'm glad that Lazarus is dead, uh, amen, because God's about to show you something. God's about to raise your level of perception. God is about to change the way you understand and see things, uh, and you could not have gotten to this next level in God if you had not experienced uh, or had this encounter with the power of God uh, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, he said, uh, nevertheless, we're going to go. He had to tell him plainly, yes, Lazarus is dead. Lazarus is dead. Okay, that's where you are. You're not listening to me with your spirit. You're only listening with your ears. Amen. Our perception of death is not the same as God's perception of death. We see death in its finality from a human perspective, but God knows that death is only a move to the greater. Death is only a move to another realm. Death takes you, amen, from the temporal realm into the eternal. Death takes you beyond what your human senses can understand, and it takes you deeper into the realm of God. You move from the realm of flesh and carnality into the realm of the spirit. Uh, and once you move into the realm of the spirit, uh, you get a different perspective on things. Praise the name of God. Uh, and so Jesus presses on in his journey. So he moves on and finally he gets there. Amen. And he is met by Martha and Martha comes running. And as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, amen, she ran out. But Mary said, still. You see, some folks just can't get over some things. Uh, some folks just can't get beyond some things. But Martha, who was the elder sister, amen, had a little more wisdom in her age. And she had a little bit more trust in Jesus Christ than Mary had. Her trust was small praise God, but she had some anyway. Her faith was limited, but she had some faith. The Lord said that if you have faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you can say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and it shall be so. You can talk to the tree and tell it to be plucked up and cast into the sea, and the tree will be gone. Praise the name of the Lord. But yet, the thing is that your faith needs to be strong. It doesn't have to be huge, but it does have to be strong. You all can consider the ant, amen, for that analogy. The ant can pick up many times its own body weight and walk long distances with the object. Praise the name of God. It's not about the size of the creature. It is about the determination that the creature has to accomplish the purpose for which it exists. Our faith exists to cause us to be stronger in God, amen, than we really can comprehend. Our faith kicks in when we are facing the impossible. Our faith kicks in we are when we are facing the irrational. Our faith kicks in when we are facing the unbelievable. Praise the name of our God. And so Martha's limited faith Praise the name of God was enough to invoke a word of deliverance uh, from Jesus. Uh, no matter how small, let the faith that you have uh, be released into the atmosphere. 
Jesus will take what you have and cause it to increase to the glory of God. Uh, the faith that you have must be let go. See, holding on to your faith is not going to get you what you need from God. Uh, holding on to your little bit of faith, uh, amen, it's like the person holding on to 25 cents because that's all they got. Uh, and their hand stays tight. Uh, but if they would just loose that 25 cents, uh, open their hand up, somebody might put a little more in. Uh, see, because if your hand is clenched so tight, uh, can't nothing get in and can't nothing get out. Uh, if you hold on to your little little bit of faith and you never let that little bit of faith go in the atmosphere your faith can't grow uh, and nothing can come to you that's going to edify your spiritual man and so uh, Mary Martha let that little bit of faith go praise the name of the Lord uh, back up in verse 20 he said then Martha as soon as she heard Jesus was coming uh, she went and met him but Mary Set still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. See, when you got just a little bit of faith, uh, you're believing that if Jesus would have been on the premises, uh, her brother would not have died. She did not have the spiritual understanding. Uh, she was not astute enough uh, in her understanding of the power of God. Uh, she did not have the revelatory knowledge necessary to know that Jesus, uh, uh, though he was in human form, uh, yet and still was everywhere at the same time. Uh, how is this so, preacher? Uh, uh, because in that body was a spirit, uh, and the spirit of God is omnipresent. Uh, it's everywhere at the same time. Uh, it is omniscient. Uh, it knows all things. Uh, it knows things from the beginning uh, right on down unto the end. Uh, it sees the start, uh, and it sees the close, uh, and the middle all at the same time. Uh, and so that's why Jesus could say to his disciples, Lazarus is just sleeping. Uh, his disciples understood that he was dead. But Jesus knew he was just sleeping. Uh, Martha knew uh, that her brother was sick and died. Uh, but Jesus knew he was just sleeping. Uh, Martha understood uh, what death was from the natural perspective. Uh, uh, but Jesus saw death uh, from the eternal and spiritual perspective. Uh, and so Jesus told Martha, uh, say, listen here, Martha. Uh, 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 she, Martha told Jesus uh, but I know that even now this is where her faith kicked in uh, I know that even now praise the name of God whatsoever thou will ask of God uh, God will give it thee uh, and Jesus said unto her thy brother shall rise again uh, see Martha had a little bit of faith uh, she said if you'd have been here he wouldn't have died but I believe and I know who you are uh, and if you'll just say it right now my brother will get up. Uh, glory to the name of God. Jesus said he shall rise again. Now, I hear Martha digressing again uh, back into her spirit. Uh, amen. In spite of the fact that her little bit of faith uh, had unlocked, uh, amen, great revelation from God. Uh, you see, when God gave her the revelation that her brother would rise again, uh, it flew right over her head. Uh, oh, a lot of times God will say things in our spirit uh, and it'll fly right by uh, why because it's not coming amen with a hubba shabba and a daba daba amen a whole lot of tongues uh, and a verse saith the lord uh, jesus just simply said uh, amen in five words thy brother shall rise again uh, oh glory to god the number five we know is the number of grace uh, and grace declared uh, that lazarus was gonna get up uh, but many times people miss what grace is saying Oh, they're so bereaved in their spirit. They're so tore up in the soul. They're so distressed because of the immediate situation. They don't hear the revelatory words spoken by God. And so Martha said unto Jesus, I know that he shall rise again in the, resurre the resurrection at the last day. Ah, glory to God. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection 
resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Here goes Jesus again, spewing out some more revelation, spitting some good words into her hearing. And she kept on missing the mark. She kept on missing what God was saying. She was trying to rationalize this thing in her own mind. You see, you can't let Amen. The faith that you have, uh, amen, be canceled out by your own human rationalization. Uh, you cannot let the little bit of faith that you got uh, be canceled out by trying to figure out every move that Jesus is doing. Uh, you're trying to find every reason Jesus says what he says. Uh, oh, listen, people of God, uh, saints of the most high, uh, unbelievers, hobos and hypocrites, liars and thieves, uh, are those that don't believe. Uh, if you can just believe uh, what Jesus has said, uh, you can see great things. Uh, if you can believe uh, what the word of God has said unto you, uh, you will be able to experience God uh, at a whole new level. Uh, you don't have to get an explanation all the time. God does not have to sit you down, uh, give you a step-by-step, play-by-play, one, two, three, X, Y, Z. <laughs> he does not have to tell you uh, everything that's going on. Uh, that does not stop you from asking, uh, but listen, don't expect an answer. Uh, because when God wants to do something uh, according to faith, uh, you will not always get an explanation. Uh, he says only believe. Uh, glory to the name of God. Uh, that song was just ringing in my spirit this morning. Uh, we used to sing back in the day, only believe. Uh, only believe. Uh, all things are possible uh, if you only believe. Uh, or if you can believe God uh, with the faith that he has given you, uh, you will be able to see and experience uh, great things in God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord said again there in verse 25, he said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He's talking about Lazarus now. Lazarus loved God. He loved Jesus and he believed that he was the son of God. So when Lazarus died. Lazarus died in faith, uh, believing that he was going to get up one day. Uh, oh, but the thing I love about God uh, is every now and then, uh, God will give you a taste of the things that are to come. Oh, glory to God. Uh, Lazarus got a taste of the resurrection. Uh, Lazarus got a taste of life after death. Uh, Lazarus got a taste of what it's going to be like uh, to get up from the grave. Uh, oh, bless the name of Jesus. Uh, he said in verse 26, and whosoever liveth uh, and believeth in me shall never die. Uh, oh, he spoke another word of revelation into her spirit. Uh, glory to God. Now he's talking to Martha directly. And to those, uh, amen, who are around under the sound of his voice. Uh, oh, not only will you get up from the grave, uh, he said, but whosoever liveth uh, and believeth in me shall never die. Uh, what does that mean, preacher? People dying all the time in the church, uh, out the church. Uh, we didn't lost uh, 550,000 people in a year uh, just to one sickness. Uh, what are you talking about? If you liveth, you shall never die. Here we go with that perspective perspective thing again. Uh, all you can see is what's right out in front of you. Uh, all you can see and understand uh, is what your human intellect uh, can bring to your mind. Uh, oh, but the Lord said, uh, I'm going to take you a little higher today uh, if you can just believe. Uh, oh, glory to God, if you'll trust God uh, that no matter what state you're in naturally, uh, you are alive in God. Uh, though you were dead, yet shall you live and if you're alive you shall never die and Jesus said believeth thou this now it comes to the point, uh, amen, where Mary and those that are around, including us, uh, amen, have to make a decision. Uh, are we going to continue to rationalize his every move uh, and try to reason what he's saying? Uh, or are we just going 
to believe. Amen. Are you going to dare to make a move? Are you brave enough to step into the supernatural? Are you brave enough to say, Lord, I'm going to step out on your word. Lord, I'm going to believe what you said. Oh, here was Martha's response. She said unto him, yea, Lord, Oh, glory to God. You got to know when to say yes, Lord. You got to know when to get in, amen, to the spirit realm. You've got to know when to ignore what your natural eyes see and your carnal mind understands. You have to be able to say in spite of what's going on, yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the son of God, which should come into the world. Martha stepped into that realm of believing uh, that produces great faith uh, no matter what's going on around you uh, the natural world says no uh, but great faith says yea lord uh, the natural world says he's gone uh, uh, but great faith says yea lord uh, he will rise again uh, uh, the natural world says but lord uh, why go to jerusalem there uh, because he's dead ah uh, but great faith says yea lord uh, i I'm going to wake up my friend. Our great faith says, Yea, Lord, though it looks bad, I'm going to wake him up. Glory to the name of God. Yea, Lord, the supernatural realm is present and we can move right on into it. Martha dared to step into the supernatural and see the power of God in action. It is time for the church to step back into the supernatural. It is time for the church to step back into the power of the Holy Ghost. It is time for the church to step back into the realm of faith that produces results to the glory of God. Who somebody ought to bless the name of the Lord today. Oh, hallelujah. We have spent so much time wasting with praise and worship. I know somebody going to get upset right here, but you know what? I'm not even worried about you getting upset uh, because there's a greater principle God wants us to understand. Uh, we've been spent, we spend so much time praising praise uh, and worshiping worship. Uh, we have forgot to walk in the realm of the supernatural. Uh, we spend so much time praising praise uh, and worshiping worship. Uh, we have forgot uh, to get back to the altar. Uh, we have spent so much time uh, being all super spiritual uh, and theologically, amen, uh, astute uh, that we have forgotten. Uh, it was on your face uh, that you encountered Jesus. We have spent so much time trying to be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come and blessed when you go. You have forgotten where the true blessing lies on your face, calling on the name of Jesus, getting up with expectation that God's going to show up and he's going to handle every situation. Oh, bless the name of my God. Our faith is not to cause us to be well thought of in this world. Our faith is to help us walk in the supernatural so that God can be glorified in us so that the name of God can be glorified through us so that the power of God can be revealed around us because we are walking by faith and not by sight. Come on, put your hands together right where you are in the name of the Lord. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. See, we don't see a whole lot of power of God in action nowadays because we're too busy praising. We're too busy dancing. Uh, now, ain't nothing wrong with praising and dancing. Uh, we too busy worshiping. You know, we too busy speaking in tongues. Uh, amen. To come out of the tongues uh, and walk in the spirit. Uh, amen. When you're walking in the spirit, uh, oh, when sickness is in the building uh, and the power of God desires to be exhibited, uh, amen, the power of God will bring you out of your tongues 
and move you into the realm of healing. The power of God will cause you to shut your mouth, raise your hands, and channel the power of God that a soul might be set free. Ah, that the blind will receive their sight. Ah, that the sick will rise up, take up their bed, and walk. That the deaf will receive their hearing. And that the tongue of the dumb shall be loosed in the name of Jesus. The power of God is still available and it still works. Come on, give the Lord a praise right where you are today. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Our problem is we don't energize our faith. We talk about faith, but I like, I like the way James put it. You tell me about your faith. I'll show you my faith by my works. When's the last time you laid hands on the sick? And they recovered. You busy running around chasing the evangelist for a new house uh, and some more money. Glory to the name of God and, and uh, another promotion on your job. Uh, amen. We, I just want to let you know, hey amen, the folks here at Bethlehem, uh, amen, they're getting new jobs and getting promotions. Uh, not because I'm prophesying it into their lives. Uh, they're doing it because they are stretching out on faith uh, and believing God to do the work of God. Uh, amen. They're praying for one another. Uh, they're lifting up one another. They're edifying folks that are around them. Praise the name of God. They're reading their word and the word is coming alive in their lives. When that word comes alive in your spirit it will cause you to walk by faith and not by sight. It will allow you not to worry about tomorrow, but you will take care of today. For tomorrow is going to take care of itself. Sufficient to the day, the Bible says, is the evil thereof. There's enough evil you're going to run into tomorrow that you don't need to worry about it today. You only got enough faith right now to get through today because tomorrow is not promised. If God should wake you up in the morning, he will wake you up with new mercy. He'll wake you up with fresh praise. He'll wake you up with great faith. That's going to get you through the day up to the point that he has determined it. And so your faith must be energized. How do we energize our little old bit of faith? We combine it with the word of God and then we dare to believe. When you combine it with the word of God you will see the power of God moving in and around your life. When the power of God is moving. Uh, your faith is increased. Uh, oh saints of God. Uh, this is why we got to get back to the altar. This is why we have to get back to glorifying God uh, and stop glorifying flesh. Uh, this is why we got to get back to prayer meetings uh, and testimony service. Uh, this is why we got to get back to telling God how good he is. Uh, oh but we spend too much time telling God how good we are. Lord I did this in your name Lord I did that in your name and Lord I did the other in your name and God's going to tell a lot of them folks depart from me ye that work iniquity I never knew you what do you mean Jesus you never knew me you didn't spend no time on the altar I don't remember your voice I hear what you're saying but I don't see nothing you've done to the glory of God everything you did was for your own glory and your own recognition uh, you want to be top dog you want everybody to look to you for the solution oh but the bible says looking unto Jesus he is the author and the finisher of our faith uh, the bishop is not the altar and the finisher of my faith uh, the prelate is not the author and the finisher of my faith neither is the pope the cardinal or the the archbishop. Uh, my mom and daddy weren't the authors uh, of my faith. Uh, but the author and the finisher of my faith was Jesus Christ the righteous. Uh, the branch, uh, the rose of Sharon, uh, the lily of the valley, uh, the bright and the morning star. Uh, uh, the blessed one of Israel. Uh, glory to God. He is. Uh, glory to God. Uh, my Alpha and Omega. Uh, he 
is my beginning and my end. He is the one that brought me out of darkness into this marvelous light. It was the faith that Jesus gave me, the life that Jesus lived, and the death that he experienced that put me on the path to where I am today. We got to give God the glory. Give God the praise. Give God the honor because he deserves the glory, the honor, and the praise. Come on, give the Lord a hand and praise right where you are. Energize. Energize your faith. Our faith grows as our experiences and encounters with the living God increase exponentially. Your faith gets stronger when your experiences, amen, increase. When your, uh, 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 all, all, all of the things that you go through with God, your encounters, uh, when they increase with God, your faith gets stronger. You're able to do more. You're able to speak a word and that word come to pass. Listen, I don't need no prophet that can't tell me the truth. Hello, somebody. Oh, Lord, I made somebody mad. I don't need no prophet. Hey, man, prophesy me no house, no car, no money in my pocket. You want to know why? Because I got some hustle in me. Oh, glory to God. I got a little hustle. Glory to the name of God. I don't need to beg God for money when God give me strength. I don't need God to beg God for money when God has given me the ability to go out and work. The Bible did say if a man don't work, he don't eat. Folk too busy looking for pennies from heaven, amen, instead of getting the want ads and looking for a job. Amen. Too many folk are looking for miraculous, amen, things to come to pass. And you won't, oh God, I'm getting ready to get in trouble right here. I, I, I'm getting ready to get in trouble right here, but I got to say it. You, oh Lord Jesus. I almost said, no, I can't say it to the cross because the cross is, you won't even go to work. You won't even show up on time. You won't give the man your best four hours, six hours, eight hours. You won't even give him a good two. And you're wondering why they're working on your nerves. You're wondering why you got all kind of problems. You're wondering why you're on a PIP. Thank you, sir. You're wondering why you got passed over for that promotion. Everything come out your mouth. I don't know why they this. I don't know why they that. I don't know why the other. I don't know why. I don't know why. And you do know why. You know you've been late three times this week. And this is just the fourth day on the job. <laughs> you, you was on time day one to get the job. And you've been late every day since. Listen, if you want to move up in life, then you got to do what this life requires. Show up on work on time, do a good job, and promotions will come your way. Give, bless the Lord with your first fruits. Amen. Give and it shall be given. Good measure. See, y'all, y'all want to run away from that. Press down, shaking together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. Ain't no pennies coming from heaven. God will inspire men. He will inspire your boss to give you a new job. Your boss to give you a promotion. Your boss to come and ask you, would you like to be promoted? I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I've lived myself. Would you like to be promoted? I'm just trying to be a good employee, do my eight hours and go home. But I'd like for you to be promoted. I would like for you to take over the management of this job site. Would you, would you, could you? You know what? Don't even give me an answer right now. Uh, 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 let me know when you come back from vacation. Where was I going on vacation? I was going to Hawaii, me and the first lady. We was on our way to Hawaii, taking a vacation from the rat race, from the rigmarole. And the boss comes around the corner. When you come back from Hawaii, let me know if you want to run this project for me. I'm going to tell you what God will do for you.
when you are a good employee, when you work and give your very best as unto the Lord. Amen. We, 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 I, I, I didn't have to beg nobody to give me a house. Amen. Because I had a job. Amen. First lady had a job. We were credit worthy. And, and, and we had enough down payment. See, all that stuff takes work. Work to get your credit up. Stop begging God for stuff. Hey, man, you don't, don't want to stretch out on faith that you ain't even got. Hey, man, stretching out on faith, hey, man, that don't, don't stuff that don't even require faith. It just requires a little hard work. Hey, man, the stuff that requires faith is the things that you need when you step into the supernatural. When you're talking about the things of God, get your mind off the material. I know y'all, I had you for a minute, didn't I? You was paying attention, hey, man, on how to get more money and how to do better in life. Pay attention on how to be a child of God. Pay attention on, on what you're going to do when you leave this world. People dying every day. Glory to God. COVID taking out over a thousand people every single day. Hey, Amen. Around the world, tens of thousands of folks are dying every single day they're leaving here what are you going to do about it your time is coming glory to the name of God we must wake up from our slumber of Mr. Status Quo we got to wake up amen from the sleep amen that has lulled us into amen we must wake up from the sleep we have been lulled into excuse me by having our focus trained solely upon the things of this world I ain't sleep. Yes, you are. I don't care how much you say you woke. Amen. The, 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 the foolish woke with the wokeness is what they call that new movement, the woke movement. Something crazy going on. Oh, yeah. 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 You worried about being woke in this world. You need to be woke to the real world. Huh? Glory to the name of God. You need to go back. Go back and, and watch the Matrix again. You ain't got to do nothing but watch the first half of the movie. The first one. Amen. When they say you're going to take the red pill or you're going to take the blue pill. You take the blue pill, you go right on back to sleep. You forget that you, you even heard this message, and, and, and you just go on back to living your life. Amen. And when you're done, amen, hell will be your home. But if you take the red pill, <laughs> glory to God, that pill that represents the blood of Jesus Christ, if you come into the family of God, if you do like Philip did, or Thomas, excuse me, and put his hand into the side of Jesus and touch his heart, glory to God. Ah, if you take the red peel and come to understand that there is greater in this world than you could ever imagine. If you take the red peel. You make the decision for the supernatural as opposed to the temporal carnal. Glory to the name of God. You will ignore the status quo and realize you got somewhere to go. We got to wake up and remember that we are in the eyes, that we are in the will of God. Amen. We must wake up from the bewitching spell of carnality. And break free in our minds to believe what Jesus has said concerning us. We got to wake up, people of God. Glory to God. Wake up and believe. Amen. I'm not talking about this woke foolishness where you worrying about all these conspiracy theories that's running around the Internet. Amen. And where'd you get your information on the Internet? You spend so much time on the internet, amen, you don't spend no time in his presence. If you spend some time in his presence, you will not be so easily fooled. I hear Paul saying to the Galatians, oh foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Who has got a hold of your mind that you are more worried about who the president is and what's happening in Congress than you are about what's going on in the body of Christ? You are so worried about the things of this world that shall pass away. Ain't none of this foolishness it's been going on since the beginning. All oh, glory to God. Satan has tried from the start to, to corrupt leadership. Amen. He has tried his best to turn people every which way but loose. You're worried about what's going on in Myanmar. You're worried about what China's doing. What they're doing in Hong Kong, Taiwan. You're worried about what Russia doing as they peeking in on your, your, your browser habits. You're worried about is a crook going to break into your house. Oh, you're worried about everything but the will of God. Think about the will of God. 
think about what God says. Yeah, we say we believe it. Hallelujah. Yeah, we, 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 we worry about everything, but, but, but how God is concerned about us. What does Jesus think about what you're doing? How you're living? What you're saying? Where you're going? Can you take Jesus everywhere you go? We sung a song back in the day. Take the Lord God with you everywhere you go. Now, folks don't want to take Jesus with them because, you know, they're they in the club now. And they're sitting down with their sippy sip. Well, Jesus, he, he sat with the wine bibbers and he sat with the sinners and the publicans. And then stop it. Just stop it. Just because he sat with them didn't mean he was partaking of the same lifestyle. He sat with them, telling them about the kingdom that was to come. That's why they came out the bars and the brothels and followed him. Why, preacher, how do you know they came out the bars and the brothels? The Bible says that Mary Magdalene had seven devils cast out of her. It is rumored that she was a prostitute. Amen. The woman who was caught in adultery, Jesus simply told her, I'm not trying to condemn you. Get up and stop sinning. That's what he told her. Get up and stop sinning. Go and sin no more. I'm not going to condemn you because I want you to not sin anymore. I came that you might have life and that life more abundantly. Glory to the name of God. So what does that bring us today? Jesus said to Martha, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Do you believe it today? Do you believe what Jesus said about you and your future? If you believe it, then act upon it. Amen. It is not the work that is going to save you. It is believing that Jesus said, do the work. And because you believe you do the work, Jesus opens up the doors and makes the ways because you believed. He opens the doors and he makes the ways because you believe. He read your heart before you even got started. How do I know that? Abraham, he left his father's house, left his kindred, believed in the promise of God, waited uh, uh, 25 years to have a son, had the son, and then God said, take him up to Mount Moriah and sacrifice him to me. And Abraham was like, excuse me? You take him up to Moriah and sacrifice him as a burnt offering. And Abraham took the three-day journey up to Mount Moriah, told the lad, wait right here with the donkey, me and the lad, we're going to go up in yonder and worship, and we're coming right back. You see, Abraham walked up there fully believing and expecting God to raise his son from the dead. He fully believed it. That's why when he put, made the fire, built the altar, put the wood on it, amen, put his son up on that altar and raised a knife, the Lord told the angel, tell him, stop. I know now of a surety that there is nothing you will withhold from me. Look over yonder. There's a ram in the bush. Glory to God. That's the offering. I will give you the offering that I want. Oh, glory to the name of God. God gives you what he wants you to give to him. Amen. Stop trying to give him whatever you like. Amen. And give him what he asked for. Give me that ram in the bush. That's why I tell people, you know, sometimes, you know, as we preachers go places and the, the main preacher don't show up or they have an opening and they say, oh, praise God, we got a ram in the bush. And we want Bishop to come on up and say a few words to his business. I, I tell him right now, I ain't the ram in the bush. Ram in the bush got killed. You can call me Isaac or something. I'm not the ram in the bush. I'm just here for the appointed time. Glory to the name of God. Listen, act upon what God tells you. If you can believe it, then make a move into the supernatural. Be like Martha. Amen. Run into the supernatural. When, if you read the story, Mary, when she heard, Mary ran to Jesus and said the same thing. If you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. And she just cried and cried and cried and cried. She didn't say like Martha said. See, there's people at all different levels and different stages of faith. Yeah, but when Jesus rose on that third day, Mary was on her. She was the first one to the tomb. Oh, hello, somebody. After she saw Lazarus got up, she was the first one at the tomb. She got there before the daybreak. 
See, when you've had an experience, <clears throat> you've had an encounter with God. If you can believe on him as the scriptures have said, then out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. If you only believe. Wake up, saints, and believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we give you glory and praise this day. We thank you, Lord, for those that have tuned in, Lord God, and those that have heard your word. We thank you for how you've blessed them on this day and how you've blessed us, O oh God, for standing in the gap, Lord God, and be the conduit so that this word from heaven, Lord God, could get to the ears, the hearts, and the minds of those people that have tuned in today and that will be tuning in even later on. Lord, for this is a relevant word, relevant for the time, amen, relevant for this season in which we live. Lord, we live in a season of much distress, much turmoil, Lord God, much perplexity, but we are not in perplexity, Lord God. We are not distressed, Lord God, and we are not forsaken. For the joy of the Lord is our strength, and we shall stand at the last day, Lord God, having our names written in the Lamb's book of life. And we give you glory and praise. But Lord, if there's someone who is listening today that does not know you in the pardoning of your sins, Lord, you came to resurrect them as well. Ah, glory to God. Though they were dead in their sins, yet shall they live. Lord, you are here to resurrect them by the power of your Holy Spirit. You told us, Lord God, that if we would repent of our sins, if we would receive baptism in your name, that you would fill us with the gift of the Holy Ghost and that we would rise coming out of that water to walk in the newness of life in the name of Jesus. We bless you for that today. Now bless those, those that are listening, Lord God. And if they're listening under the sound of my voice and you feel God tugging at your heart, just pray and ask God to forgive you, to cleanse you, to wash you from all your sins even right now. Ask of him to make you a new creature. In the name of Jesus, for if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. That means you surrender your old life and all things are become new in Jesus' name. And God promised that he's going to bless you. Now you need to find yourself a church, a good church. If you're not in the Denver metro area and you don't have a church home, amen, please give, shoot us an email, bishopjeffclint at btfwc.org. And we will be glad to find, help you find one that's going to tell you the truth, that's going to look after your soul and be a blessing to you <coughs> in the name of the Lord. If you're in the Denver metro area, amen, or close by, if you don't have a church home, amen, you're welcome to come worship with us. 389 Quentin Street, Aurora, Colorado, 80011. If you're unable to get out of your house, you may be bedridden, amen, and don't have transportation or whatever, you can tune in again, amen. We'll be so happy to drop a word. <coughs> of encouragement into your heart in Jesus name glory to God so God bless you the Lord keep you the Lord be gracious unto you the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and the Lord give you peace wake up wake up and believe listen we are still in the midst of our amen building project our renovation project amen and we still need your help those of you that would love to help, we would love for you to join in with us, amen, and be a blessing, whatever, amen, you can do to help us along, amen, we certainly appreciate it. Our goal was 25000 amen, to finish the renovations that need to be done from the broken pipes over the, the winter, the big freeze that we had, and, and we, we, we still need your help, amen, we're moving along, praise God, but we got a little ways to go, and we would certainly love to have you help and be a blessing to us. All your gifts are tax deductible. Amen. You can claim them as charitable donations. Amen. On your taxes. And we would certainly love for you to join in with us. Amen. And to help us get this place in order because we're going to be opening up real soon. And we want, amen, all of the repairs and things to be done. So the saints, when we come back into the house of prayer to worship, amen, and to lift up the name of Jesus, amen, in person and to hug one another, amen, heart to heart. Amen, that we want everything to be uh, fresh and, 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 and cleaned up and fixed up, amen, so that these issues don't happen again in Jesus' name. So please be a blessing, amen, and join with us, partner with us. If you'd like to just be a regular partner with us, amen, whatever the Lord puts upon your heart, amen, if you believe in tithing, you don't have a home church, amen, we would certainly be happy to receive your tithe, and we will, amen, uh, join you with us in our spirit, amen, and we will pray for you regularly and continually that God will bless, encourage, and lift you up in the name of the Lord and we will be here at the ready amen for you whatever need you might have spiritually or if we can meet a physical need we will be there to meet a physical need amen in Jesus name all right so God bless you amen the Lord love you 
praise the name of the God. They're going to put back up on the screen the ways to give and things and a couple of reminders. Amen. But until next time, join us Tuesday night, 7 o'clock. Amen. We will see you at Bible study in Jesus' name. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.